Hi, uh, I'm Brenda Ortiz, professor and extension specialist in the Department of Crop, Soil, and Environmental Sciences. I am the leader of the Alabama Extension Precision Agriculture Team. Um, we, the Precision Agriculture Team, is an interdisciplinary team that works with many faculty, extension and research faculty across campus, and also we collaborate with faculty from other universities in the Southeast. We are interested in helping farmers and crop consultants adopting site-specific management strategies. What this thing means, we would like to help farmers and consultants adjusting and adapting management according to the characteristics and the properties and the environment uh, that happens in a particular field or within the field. There are many precision agriculture technologies that can be used to uh, implement site-specific management related perhaps to precision planting, precision irrigation, variable rate management of nutrients or water, or even uh, variable rate um, harvest or variable rate application of fungicide or herbicide. The focus of my program right now is on three different areas. First, precision irrigation, so we are working with farmers at their farms, helping, uh, helping farmers using tools to improve irrigation scheduling. That means decisions of when to irrigate and how much to irrigate and perhaps how much and when to irrigate at a particular location within a field. We are also helping farmers adopting variable rate irrigation, meaning instead of applying a single rate of water, we are helping them using technology to change the irrigation rate as the pivot traverse over a particular field. We are also putting a lot of emphasis and work on evaluation and training on how to use precision planting technologies to uh, adapt the planter settings on the go as the planter moves to place that seed at the proper uh, soil environment that will promote emergence and growth and development. And we are also initiating uh, some work on the use of UAVs, drones, to assess peanut emergence to support decisions on replanting and we will be working this year of a, on a very innovative project to use UAB drone images to assess peanut maturity. We know that the decisions of when to harvest peanuts are extremely linked to sometimes peanut yield losses. So we want to help farmers, we want to put all this information and tools on the hands to the farmers so they can improve their decisions, not only during the season, not only before the seasons, but also during the season and at the end of the growing season. Today, we are going to show results on a very innovative project that is focused on the use of precision planting technologies to improve a the planting operations. Right now, there are uh, technologies on the market that allow farmers to retrofit existing planters with uh, precision technologies that are going to allow the planter to adapt to the conditions of the soil, uh, conditions of the soil like soil moisture, soil texture, uh, the resistance of the soil to the penetration to place that seed at the proper depth 
that is going to promote emergence and is going to increase uh, a plant growth and development. So we have been conducting a, a test for the last two years. So today we are gonna show results of the 2019 growing season. And even though our results from the 2019 studies, those results are still very valid. What we want today is to raise awareness to help the farmers realize the role that planter settings plays on the proper seeding depth, and this proper seeding depth is going to help with emergence and even has a strong relationship with to final year. So we are also evaluating what we will be showing today is the beginning of a work that we have initiating evaluating precision planting technologies uh, that can be installed on planters or farmers that are buying new planters with those technologies built into the planter. Uh, right now, the majority of the farmers um, are planting, are using planters. The, right now, the majority of the farmers use planters that um, are using, I would say, the traditional planting technologies uh, that are springs on the row units, okay? Those springs on the row units uh, are not going, the springs on the row unit are going to keep or maintain a fixed load on each row unit. So those, uh, the technology is not going, the, the springs are only gonna keep a, a fixed load on the planter, uh, or the springs on the row units are going to keep a single load on that row unit. In contrast, right now there is technology uh, available that allow that row unit, sorry, the, right now, right now there is precision planting technologies that allow automatic changes on the forces that are being imposed to that row unit, so it helps uh, placing that seed at the proper depth without really compacting the soil or placing that seed uh, at deeper depths that perhaps we don't want, or perhaps putting more force on that road unit that we don't want. So we are going, uh, Luan, my, my, my graduate student already showed the impact and the differences between the traditional manual modes uh, of downforce and the new technology that allow the, the, the planter to change that downforce on the go. So what we saw, what my grad student one uh, show is that there are differences between the automatic mode of downforce that can be applied using precision planting technologies and the manual traditional planting mode. Okay, so what we did on this test was comparing the automatic mode of um, planting that imposed on the go changes on that row unit to adapt to the soil conditions uh, compared to the traditional fixed load that is uh, mainly used by farmers. So what we saw on these preliminary results is that the traditional manual fixed mode of downforce tend to over apply, like we see here, for example, on this particular treatment. This is the 125 pounds manual fixed load, okay? 
and we wanted to apply what we wanted. The target of this treatment was 125 pounds, but it ended up applying, the planter ended up applying 170 pounds. When we compare this manual fixed load with the automatic uh, manual, with the, when we compare the 125 pounds manual fixed load with the automatic precision planting mode, we saw that the, the final applied load match with the desired target load on the manual, but when we, sorry, <clears throat> let me start over. When we compare the automatic mode using precision planting technologies with the 125 pounds manual fixed load with respect to the final load applied, we see that the manual fixed load tend to over apply the load on that row unit compared to the automatic precision planting mode that was on the target. Okay, so we didn't observe any over application of load on the automatic mode compared to the manual fixed load. And we observed this for all the other seeding depth treatments that we impose on this study. So let's look at what might happen when we exceed the target load that perhaps is presented when we use manual fixed loads in comparison to the automatic precision planting loads. Okay, and let's see that effect on three different seeding depths. So what we did was we wanted to evaluate the, the impact. What we wanted was to evaluate several things. First, we wanted to evaluate the impact of different down forces levels on seed emergence, soil compaction, and final peanut yield. And we wanted to evaluate that impact of downforce level when we plant peanuts at three different depths. Two inches, the gray bars on this graph, 2.5 inches, the blue, the 2.5 inches, the green bars on the graph, and three inches, the red bars on this graph. The other thing that you can see on this graph is we wanted to compare those down forces between the manual fixed mode, that is the traditional mode uh, you can find on most planters, and the new automatic precision planting mode, okay, that is the empty bar on this graph. We wanted to evaluate emergence, and emergence, uniformity on emergence, is what we really, farmers are looking after. Uniformity on emergence is what we, uniformity on emergence is what farmers are after, what farmers would like to see on their fields. A delay on emergence is going to cause probably gaps and is going to, during the growing season, having a uniform, uh, during the growing season, having uh, gaps between plants might result into plant competition for light, plant competition for water, plant competition for nutrients. So farmers like to see a field with, that is uniform emergence, there are no gaps, there are no skips, okay? So what we wanted is to measure the impact of planter downforce on 
peanut emerges. And we use an indicator for emergence that is the emergence velocity index. The emergence velocity index measures the rate of emergence. That means that the grade, the higher the, the higher the emergence velocity index, the faster the emergence. The lower emergence velocity index, the lower the emergence. Okay, so what we can see on these graphs first is that seeding depth, what we can see on this graph is that seeding depth matters. And that's extremely important to peanut farmers. So the results from this test are from the evaluation of the most common peanut variety planted by farmers. These results are from the Georgia O6G peanut variety, okay? And what we can see from this graph is that when we planted this particular variety at 2.5 inches, we observed the faster emergence compared to planting this Georgia 06G at 2.2 inches and 3 inches. So when we compare planting that variety at 2 inches, 2.5 inches and 3 inches, we observe the fastest emergence uh, at 2.5 inches. The other thing that we can see from this graph is if it happens that you plant this variety at 3 inches, when you increase the down force, when you come here you can see that we increase down force from one from 125 pounds to 250 pounds, you see a decrease, a delayed on emergence. So as you increase your down force, you might impact, you will impact your emergence. You will delay the emergence in this case. Okay? Also, this is another important aspect to see. When you apply a, a 250 pounds of down force with a desired target of 3 inches seeding depth, you, that results into a lot of variability in emergence. So the greater the greater the down force, the greater the variability in emergence. Yield is the result of what farmers do pre-planting, at planting, during the growing season, and even at harvest. So I really would like to show you the impact of down force and seeding depth on peanut yield. These results corresponds to the to this results corresponds to the 2019 growing season of a study conducted at the E.B. Smith uh, Research Station here in Macon, Alabama. So uh, again, I would like to emphasize that we wanted to evaluate the impact of different downforce levels. 125 pounds and 250 pounds. We also wanted to compare the manual fixed load mode, that is the most utilized by farmers, with the new planting technology mode, that is the automatic mode. And we evaluated that at three different seeding depths. What you can see on this graph is yield, final exam. The, the red bars on this part of the graph shows the yield results when we planted peanuts at 3 inches. This is Georgia 06G. And we can see that as we increase down force, as we increase down force from 125 pounds to 200, when we increase down force here, when we increase down force, from 125 pounds 
to 250 pounds on the manual mode, increasing load is going to decrease peanut yield. So that's extremely important to farmers. The load on your planter matters. Okay, and you might be hurting yield just at the beginning of the growing season. The other important aspect is that the new technologies on those planters, the technologies that you can buy to allow the planter and those raw units to adjust according to the characteristics of the soil, to adjust to a soil texture, to soil moisture, are going to be beneficial for your emergence, for growth, and for final yield. Look at this example. This empty bar corresponds to the automatic precision planting mode uh, using 125 pounds and this bar corresponds to yield using the same load, 125 pounds manual fixed load and you can see the greater yield using the automatic mode compared to the traditional manual fixed mode, okay? You also saw that and it was very evident as well if you plant shallow, if you plant peanuts at two inches and you compare the automatic precision planting mode with the manual fixed mode, you see that you have higher yield using the automatic mode compared to the manual mode. We also saw the same thing when we planted peanuts at 2.5 uh, inches. There were not a lot of differences between the automatic and manual uh, using 125 pounds, but, but excessive down force is going to hurt your yield. If we compare automatic mode at 125 pounds with manual mode at 250 pounds, you see a yield decrease. The same thing, if you just compare manual mode, 125 pounds manual, with 250 pounds manual mode, you see a yield decrease. So, the take home message here is that your seeding depth matters. We found that when we compare two inches, two and a half inches and three inches seeding depth, the, the better emergence the faster emergence was found on the 2.5 inches seeding depth. When we compare down forces levels, down forces low, we saw that as we increase the down force, you decrease your yield. And we also saw that when we use automatic precision planting technologies on the planter compared to the traditional manual fixed load, you have better emergence, you have less soil compaction, which is extremely important, and you have uh, greater yields. We hope you find these results useful and you can contact us at any time. We will be very happy to help you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Juan Oliveira. I'm an agronomist engineer, currently working as a research assistant for Alabama Precision Agriculture team. The project is led for Dr. Brenda Ortiz from Crop, Soil, and Environmental Sciences Department from Auburn University. Uh, currently we are working on a project with uh, planters hydraulic downforce with peanuts, corn, and cotton crops. And today we are going to show some results for, from our peanut work. Uh, Currently, there are some products in the market called hydraulic downforce mechanism. These downforces, these, these mechanisms, they are active downforces. They are called active downforces, uh, which the far, in which the farmers can uh, select 
a downforce target inside of the cabin in the onboard computer and the mechanism of the system will apply a target amount of downforce uh, considering the solverability. Okay? If your soil is uniform, uh, you can apply a manual downforce. You can, you can set the manual mode, which it will, you select the same amount of downforce, but it won't consider the solverability and maybe the loads will be changed according to field. Okay? First of all, <clears throat> we can look to this picture here. We have uh, two situations. I'll have to say that the downforce, the gauge will load, it changes according to soil variability, all right? Depending on my soil, my reaction force on my opening discs or on my gauge wheels or on my closing wheels will be different. So I have a case of a light, light, lighter soil here, which I have the total downforce, my soil reaction force and my gauge wheel load. In this case, the reaction force on my opening disc will be approximately 21.5% on my opening disc right here because they are inside of the gauge wheels. Uh, on my gauge wheels, they will be 64.25% approximately uh, and 14.25% on my closing wheels. Why that? Imagine that, that I have a lighter soil, a sand soil, with uh, less, percent, less per percentage of clay. Uh, my cutting discs, my opening discs, they will get easily inside of the furrow and my whole pressure will be applied on the gauge wheels. So less opening disc load requirement increase, increase my gauge wheel loads and these higher loads can increase my sidewall compaction chances resulting in delayed emergence resulted in improper root development and maybe impacting my yield. Uh, this is a light soil scenario. Let's go to the heavy soil. In the heavy soil, my forces will be distributed in a different way. 75.1% approximately on my opening discs, 14.25% uh, in my gauge drills, on my gauge drills, and 14.25% on my closing wheel. Why? Because the soil resistance on a, on a heavy soil with more clay content is higher on the surface and it creates more opening disc load requirement, decrease my gauge wheel load, and at some points in the field, my, <clears throat> my gauge wheels, they, they are not touching the ground. It will, hard, it will be hard to reach my sitting deck with that because I need more downforce. Maybe this uh, decrease in my gauge wheel load will result in delayed emergence because I planted too shallow and maybe even uh, with my seedlings not get raised in the soil. Okay, so seeing that in 2019 we developed one work in the low ambient soil with testing different downforces and different seeding depths. Three loads, 125 pounds in the automatic mode, the, out, the, the mode that considers the solver ability to keep the target. The 125 pounds in the manual mode, the one that do not consider the, the solver ability, and 250 pounds in the manual mode. In this left axis here, we have the downforce in pounds. This blue line, it's uh, the coefficient of variation represented in this right axis in, in, in blue as well. So we have three sitting depths, two inches, 2.5 inches, and three inches, three down forces, one in automatic, two in manual. The empty bars, they represent the automatic mode, and the solid bars, they represent the manual mode. Talking about the loads right now, we see that in the manual mode, the 125 pounds over applied, in, even in the 2 inches, 2.5 inches, and 3 inches depth, over applied the loads, and 250 pounds it under applied. 
which means that these loads they are not considering the solverability okay but when we go to the automatic mode we saw that the 125 pounds automatic kept the loads in the target for both scenarios all right so the We evaluated uh, the impact of these loads on soil compaction and in these graphs, for these graphs, we measured directly the soil compaction using the soil cone index, which means the soil resistance to penetration, all right? So, impact of downforce on, on soil compaction in the left axis, Y axis here, we have the soil resistance in, the, in this right axis we have the coefficient of variation, blue line, the coefficient of variation. Empty bars represent the automatic mode, the solid bars, the manual mode, and we still have the three hinges there. Okay, so first, what, uh, what we can see here, we can see that in general, when I apply more loads, 200, close between 200 and 225 pounds, my soil compaction was increased as well. Okay, those are our preliminary results from the 2019 test. We still need to run some, some analysis and maybe the coefficient of variation that we see here reduce the amount of load of this first uh, deck and maybe it can present the same behavior that the other ones that the 250 pounds with 250 pounds we are having more down we are having more compaction all right bottom line the automatic mode in two scenarios two, uh, two inches and three inches presented the lower load and the lower soil compaction 